Welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. In today's project, we're going to be building a video editing PC. And I don't have any reason to own another, another PC. I'm more of a Mac person, per se, and I do all my editing on a Mac. Uh, but I wanted to build a PC, and so I had to come up with an excuse to build a PC. My excuse for this project is to build Orion, at least I think that's his name, over on Haggard Garage, a video editing PC, and maybe something that he could game with when he's not cranking out videos for all of us. And I wanted to do something unique, so today's build is going to be on 8020, and instead of a conventional case. And I thought that that sort of went with their ethos over at Haggard Garage, in that like you don't have to make everything look super pretty, you just need to make it functional. And I thought the guys would get a kick out of seeing all of the parts sort of sprawled out and uh, just put on display on a, a chassis, a single chassis. Uh, it's also gonna have a handle if I can incorporate that, so they wanna like take it somewhere, or, like, you know, you know, put it in the rape van and take it to some track day or whatever and do some editing in the field. It's sorta of doable. I um, also wanna have some flexibility in case they wanted to mount it on the wall, uh, it would, it, it would be doable with some like some brackets or something like here to just actually um, toss this in here and then bolt it right to the wall and hang up there and just be out of your way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a stab at building this thing out. Let's take a Quick once over of this, uh, this the setup here. It's got Wi-Fi built into a little uh, PCIe card. And like you saw earlier, it's got this low profile, not to a nearly silent uh, CPU fan. Uh, modular power supply, mostly because I, I didn't want to deal with the cable management or trying to like clip things off and they come in black. So that's awesome. And I didn't plan it this way, but there ended up being sort of a red and black theme. Uh, and of course, I bought a black fan to replace this one, but it ended up being slightly larger. Uh, that's just because I can't read. And uh, painting this, I thought would look kind of ghetto, so I'm just gonna leave it be. Uh, I think it shows off like the brand, at least. Noctua does this to kind of differentiate themselves from other folks. Uh, and as you saw, the, the motherboard has uh, a red and black kind of theme. 
and then it ended up carrying through quite, you know for other stuff like my power button uh, and then recently the haggard guys put out a, like a new logo or kind of like revamped their website and made a bunch of swag and s sweaters and t-shirts and shit and included a new logo and i was like oh it's awesome they've got a, a red and black and a, a red and black and white logo and so the 8020 that we did have built this out of has uh end caps to it and i thought why not add a little bit of uh, personalization to it and so i fabbed up these uh, end caps they just stick right into the uh, the end of the 8020 where you've cut it they're they're designed uh, to keep little rough edges and things like this from scraping people or in this case the edges here from nicking up tables or whatever you put it on as we walk this way memory um i thought about painting those but i thought the the aluminum matches the aluminum here so left them alone uh, as you can see it's got a wi-fi antenna and luckily it's black and and also magnetic so it just sticks here uh, those guys can pull it off and stick it wherever they'd like maximum wi-fi signals and put it up on top uh, but it's very convenient that it was magnetic. I was able to kind of tuck it away. Otherwise, I was looking at doing um, custom little, uh, what they call ducky antennas, or these short little stubby guys that kind of stick out of here, maybe like make a 90 degree turn and poke up this way. Uh, I ended up using the stock one, mostly in the interest of time. Uh, I know that this is going to be hopefully used for video editing, and uh, I tend to go through a lot of SD cards or have lots of things sort of floating around between all the different GoPros and stuff. And so I also 3D printed a SD card holder and will allow them to store a couple of their SD cards up here. After I built it, it dawned on me that I, mean, I was shorting it out with like a screwdriver to get it booted up and I'm pretty sure they don't want to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. So I included a button that powers this thing up. Actually, let's go ahead and boot it up now. So I'm going to show you the LEDs that it has. And there's software that comes from Gigabyte to control the LEDs. Um, some of their models have RGB. I don't think that this one's RGB. I think it's just red. And it's either on or off or pulsing or matching your music or some bullshit like that. Um, but it, it gives it a nice glow through here, which is kind of cool. You'll notice the fan kicks up for a moment and then stops again for the power supply. It only comes on when it's drawing max power or the there's a like temperature sensors in here that keep it off unless it gets warm, which is really nice when this is on your desk or near your desk. Uh, it ends up being nearly silent. And that's it now. That's, that's as much noise as this thing makes right now running. And as you saw earlier, it's got a M.2 SSD on the back side, and so there's not spinning hard disk or anything like that making a bunch of noise. And actually, the, the other noise you might be hearing in the garage here is like my NAS box and a couple other um, hard drives that are spinning off just to the left of the camera here. Um, but this thing, you have to get right up close to it to even hear this thing wearing around. With it on, let's take a look at those LEDs I was talking about earlier. They're just back here. And of course, they're probably blinding you, but um, when they're normally in your case, it sort of peers through and you can see them, see the light leaking through. It kind of looks like this. Yeah, you see they're just sort of peeking through the, uh, the PCB. It's kind of cool. Hmm. You can turn them off if you don't like them. And that's it. I mean, that's this thing in a nutshell. Really, you know, in low profile, relatively speaking. <laughs> um, you can also lay it flat, if you like. You rock it like that. You'll see here I ran this extruded aluminum just about, you know, half an inch to, you know, a quarter of an inch higher than the graphics card itself. And that's because I wanted it to be able to protect the, the graphics card if you're moving it around and it bumps up against something, it should bump and hit this before it hits your graphics card. But um, there, there are a couple other things like some of the cabling kind of sticks out, but um, you just keep an eye on it, you'll be all right. Well, I hope everybody's enjoyed this minimalist PC build. If you choose to build one like it or exactly like it or sort of 
inspired by it, feel free to leave a comment or post a video of the one you've built. I'd, be, I'd love to see them or see how you take this and do something slightly different with it. I went with a, you know, a, a rugged sort of built for the purpose. There's nothing on here that isn't serving a purpose. Uh, and I tried to make it as small, as compact as possible with uh, a decent sized power supply for expandability later or uh, just, I don't know, just to keep it quiet. But other than this thing being large, I guess you could probably go smaller. There's some like 650s and things that you could go smaller uh, and maybe shrink it down to about this far. But I didn't want to compromise since this is going to be a workhorse of a video editing machine for the uh, Haggard Garage guys. But if you've enjoyed this and you want to see other builds like it or projects that are sort of random, feel free to subscribe and like this video. Thanks, guys.